Hi lovelies. Today we are making our freezer meals. We are starting the year on a bang and I'm going to share with you the easiest way that I find to make freezer meals because the whole essence is to just make our life easier. Yeah. So I've done plenty of preparation up to this point. And I'm just about to start making fantastic meatballs in tomato sauce. Yum. That's going to be my first freezer meal dish. But the first thing I want to do is to make my garlic and ginger paste. And then we get on with the meatball. One thing I like to do to make the freezer meal process easier is to not go shopping the same day that I'm doing the freezer meals. <laughs> Let me tell you, when I started this journey, I'd go to the market in the morning and then... <laughs> think that i'll be back home by lunchtime prepare my dishes and then i'll start cooking at like 4 p.m let me tell you i would be up cooking the whole night not a good idea so i highly recommend just don't go shopping the same day i like going to the market the main main market when i can because it just makes everything so much easier and also another thing is to get help Someone just to help me prepare the ingredients so that when I don't, I'm not doing both the chopping and the cooking. And of course, you know, I have a food process that, that also makes everything go much, much faster. Another thing I'm doing today is I want to prepare the garlic and ginger paste fast because I'm using it in basically all my meals, most of them. So I just chop the garlic and the ginger, put them in the, my blender, a little bit of water and just blend together. All this is going to get finished because I'm making meals for like a lot of weeks, like four or five weeks, hopefully six weeks. So now it's time to make the meatballs. We have gone a while before we had meatballs. They freeze so well. And what I'll need... I'm using three kilos of minced beef. I'm making a big batch. I'm using six eggs here one cup of chopped coriander parsley anyone three cups of breadcrumbs i have salt i have oregano i have pepper and i have my ginger garlic paste so these ones i'm going to roast in the oven then we're going to make the tomato base sauce i bought my minced meat from kmc for making these meatballs again i'm making quite a bit of meatballs and i like to roast them in the oven which goes much faster because I can do many of them at a time as opposed to frying them in the pan, which will take much longer. And my helpers are always ready to help me. I love just the fact that we are able to do this with our kids because they are homeschooled. So when they're not having class, they're able to just come and help me, which just gives them so much experience in the kitchen and just fun bonding moments. I love it. Amazing. As a working mom, I find that freezer meals make my life so much easier. Literally, they save me like at least two hours every day because I don't have to cook food every single day. Unless maybe I'm doing something like making the starch, which is so much easier. And my sweet help helps me to do that. But then again, I don't have to be thinking every day, what are we going to eat? What are we going to eat? Like the freezer is full. So it is so time saving. It also saved me quite a bit of money because I don't have to keep buying ingredients every day. Like I do one major shopping per month and then I cook most of our meals. And then the rest is just supplemental once a week here and there. So I highly recommend for all busy people. These meatballs are going to go into the oven at 200 degrees centigrade for about 20 to 25 minutes or until they are browned and cooked through. And as that is going on, I want to prepare the tomato base. I'm also taking this chance to make some fruits for the kiddos because life is still lifing as much as I'm busy in the kitchen. They also have to keep well fed. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that, I don't know if this happens to your house, in your house, let me know. Like sometimes when I cook food and I cook with tomatoes, when people see that red part, the skin, they just start putting it aside. I do not like that. And I think as someone who's really passionate about my cooking, I feel bad when I see people that are segregating part of my food that they are choosing to not eat. So anyway, to avoid that this time, I'm trying to peel my tomatoes. 
and i'll do that by first blanching them in boiling water first i score them as i did there with the knife and then i blanch them in boiling water and then i'm going to show you how i'll peel them <music> I was pleasantly surprised to get really, really fresh basil from Marie Kitty. I had not intended to buy it. I knew the recipe needed basil, but I didn't know I could find it there. So yeah. So now, as you can see, the tomatoes are nicely blanched. And then the first thing to do once you remove them from the hot water is I'm putting them in cold water to stop the cooking, immediately stop the cooking so they don't overcook. And look at how easily the peel comes off. It is so easy now. I can avoid that whole situation of guys setting aside the peel. And now I need to chop it in small pieces. If this is the kind of content that you like and this is your first time here, hi, my name is Susie. I am a working mom of four young kids and here we just see, we just look to make motherhood magical. So if this is your kind of content, remember to give us a thumbs up and also to subscribe. And for my usual guys, hi, I'm so glad you're here. For a more balanced meal, I really, really like to put a lot of vegetables in my meals so i'm adding carrots and peas into this meatball sauce because yeah i mean we're going we try to make this meal as healthy as possible <music> done with my first meal i love how those meatballs have come out the meatball stew is going to be a hit i am sure and the kids have already said this is what we are having for dinner <laughs> yes now i realize i'm running out of spices so i'm taking a break to refill these canisters which i bought from kafu but they have really nice canisters the stickers i've had since last year when we were redoing our kitchen when we're doing a kitchen makeover we got them from an instagram page called uh home nest just check at home nest ke if you're interested in the stickers and yeah they're coming in quite handy the next meal i'm making is vegetable pilau and for this i'm using four cups of rice which i have washed and soaked for like 30 minutes and i have eight cups of mixed vegetables i mean carrots peas french beans anything that you can think of two large onions thinly sliced some oil cinnamon chopped tomatoes cardamom pods six of them eight cloves two bay leaves two teaspoons of cumin seeds some ginger and garlic paste turmeric powder garam masala salt and of course water i have been asked before whether or not one can freeze rice and other starches so today in this video i'm showing you two starches starting with this vegetable pilau and it is so so easy because first i'll fry all the spices in the melted butter and once fragrant i'm adding all the the onions and then i'll add the vegetables just saute them a little bit not make sure don't let them cook all the way if you'd like to try this meal and then once the vegetables are a bit nice and soft i'm adding the soaked rice then i add the water mix and cover it is so much easy i think all the flavor of this vegetable pilau comes from the spices of course and if you can buy pilau mix from the supermarket fantastic more power to you Next is one of my most favorite vegetarian dishes, which is red kidney beans in bacon. So one thing I also like to do to make my freezer meal cooking easier is to soak all my beans and anything that's going to be needing to be boiled for a while, I like to soak it overnight. And we all know even soaking beans overnight removes that acid that 
gives it so much gas so just soak them overnight and then pour that water and then boil with fresh water and it just re re removes the whole gassiness aspect from your beans and we really really love beans i think in every one of my freezer meal videos i always make sure i have a lot of vegetarian options to balance out the meat i'm cutting up the bacon which i want to fry on the side in a pan you guys have already taught me that i don't need to add oil when i'm frying my bacon which is fantastic and once the bacon is nicely chopped and fried we're going to put it much later in the dish you know just to give it a nice flavor just to change things a little bit apart from just the usual beans that we're used to i know i make a lot of beans in coconut but sometimes i just like to change it up a little bit so that you know guys don't get bored so this one's easy peasy after frying the onions i'm putting all the spices garlic and ginger paste and tomato paste as well to give it a really nice and thick base because again you don't want your what do you call it your bean stew to be what i i do not like that personally so that's why i like to make the base to be really nice and thick again vegetables are key here so i'm adding zucchini and tomatoes and you know let me tell you once i put all these vegetables in our meals it's it's so much better because number one it honestly increases the amount of food that i'm making so it lasts longer but even more so it's healthier for the kids and even more so the kids don't even notice that they're eating so many vegetables i mean it's really really good all the kids taste are the beans and the bacon and they just find they really like eating beans too but they don't know why yeah <laughs> As I said, today I'm making two starches for my freezer. So the second thing I'm making is chapati dough. Again, this will make my evenings so much easier because we love chapatis. I mean, who does not love chapatis? Let me know down below and please tell me why. But a lot of us love making chapatis, but we do not like the process. So one thing I found to make my freezer meals easier, especially when it comes to the chapatis, is to make the dough and then freeze it. It freezes very, very well. And then on the day of cooking, I just remove it about four, three, four hours before. It thaws very well. And then I just cook it. Even remove it like six hours or overnight before. I've tried this. It's really good. So for making the chapatis, very easy. I've done an entire very detailed video on this. But I'm using flour, salt, sugar, and hot water, and a little bit of oil. And that's it. Oh, one thing we are very keen on incorporating in our family life this year are healthy habits. Basically just habits. And one thing I used to struggle with is getting our kids to drink enough water during the day. I mean, you know, for grown-ups, we know we're supposed to drink. But for kids, you kind of have to explain to them why. So I love these bottles that we got from an Instagram page known as Quench254. If you're interested, check them out really healthy the kids are drinking so much water i cannot eat then love them and they look good i'm storing my chapati dough in these amazing freezer bags and these freezer bags by the way are also the ones i used to put food in my freezer the cooked meals and they are reusable and if you're interested i will link them down below but I really like the way I have three full doughs of chapati because they'll come in so handy for me. The next bean I am making is this creamy butter beans stew. I mean, who does not like butter beans? They are so delicious. And for this, I'm just going to use three kgs of butter beans, some carrots, onions, tomatoes, green peppers, eggplants, bay leaves paprika black pepper thyme garlic and ginger and tomato paste that's it but as i said before i soaked the beans last night makes my life so much easier and one thing i noticed you guys when i was shopping i think we're running out of butter beans in this country because i cannot explain to you how many shops i went to and i could not find them in fact the place where i bought these ones i was the last i mean i bought everything they had left and it was not even enough i walked around let me tell you I don't know why they've gone. So I always aim to incorporate a lot of plant proteins in our meals. 
but one thing i do for variety and this is why i was really really looking for those butter beans is i try to incorporate if i'm making beans yes i mean everybody expects that there'll be a type of bean stew every month to be eaten once a week but i try to change the variety of beans because we have so many varieties of beans so i just try to not always go with red kidney beans red kidneys red kidney beans although they're really really delicious and that's why i was looking for these butter beans everywhere so yeah i mean it just makes life interesting variety is the spice of life so this butter bean stew has come out so well i love the colors it is so creamy butter beans have always been a favorite of mine and it freezes so well i feel like it tastes better when you reheat it love it now let's make this delicious chicken tikka masala which needs to be marinated for like an hour or if you can do it overnight that's awesome now for the re for the ingredients i'm needing some chicken thighs and drumsticks or you can use chicken breast if you like some two cups of plain yogurt four tablespoons of lemon juice four teaspoons of ground cumin four teaspoons of ground coriander two teaspoons of paprika 2 teaspoons of ground turmeric, 4 tablespoons of grated fresh ginger and garlic and salt and pepper to taste. If you're not making for kids, you can also put some chili powder. By the way, I made a video showing 4 fantastic chicken recipes and this was one of them. Check it out. It has so much more detail but this meal tastes as good as if you bought it. Trust me. Once it has marinated, now we just fry some onions. Once we've fried some onions, we put in our garlic and ginger paste. And we're going to put in some cumin, coriander, paprika, and turmeric and tomato paste. Once it's cooked nicely, nicely, then we're going to put in our marinated chicken and some heavy cream. Fanta you guys, please try this. I mean, look at it. And next, some pork. Yes, yes, I love pork so much. So I'm making a pork honey stir fry. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to boil my pork in the pressure cooker as I prepare the rest of the sauce. Especially if you're making for kids again and you feel like your pork might be hard, very important to boil in the pressure cooker, but for like five minutes maximum. <music> and this is another very easy one because once the pork has boiled, I'm heating the oil in a large pan over medium high heat and then I'll add in our pork and stir fry until it is browned and cooked through. If you want to do that step, that's good. If you don't want like if you don't want like me, I just skipped it. Then I first I fried the on the onions and then just the rest of the vegetables, making a really nice base for this then in a small bowl i'm whisking together the honey the soy sauce and the water pouring this sauce over my cooked vegetables and then once i have a really nice and thick sauce going i'm pouring in my cooked pork and tossing everything together until the vegetables and pork are evenly coated with the sauce cooking for an additional two minutes and this is what we have this recipe is very forgiving you can do it in any order but it's delicious Another way that I've found to make this easier is to boil and stew some of the things at the same time, especially lentils because they cook so, so fast. So the recipe I'm using today, I haven't pre-boiled them. I am just going to boil them as they are cooking at the same time. And for this recipe, I'm also going to use some really interesting ingredients. So for starters, let's start on this side. I'm going to use sweet potatoes. Yes, you heard me, some sweet potatoes. 
I'm going to use some eggplant. I'm going to use the lentils. I have like three kilos of lentils here. Then we have some coconut oil. I have red peppers. And then I have garam masala. I have paprika. I have turmeric. I have thyme. I have salt. I have coconut milk. In fact, I have going to use like three cans of coconut milk. And I have tomato paste. This is going to be delicious. We've had this before. I love it. And as you can see, I've pre-boiled nothing. Not the sweet potatoes. They're still raw. And these are still raw. So let's get going. I find this red lentil uh, recipe to be so interesting because I don't have to pre-boil anything. And I highly recommend you try it because I never thought this was possible. So much easy. So the first thing I'll do is I'm frying the onions and then I'll add the spices. Once the onions are nice and soft, cook spices until they're fragrant and then add in the vegetables and the raw chopped sweet potatoes. Can you even? So once the sweet potatoes are a bit nice and soft, I'm going to add in the clean but very raw lentils and some water and a stock cube. By the way, today I didn't have any stock. You know, guys, I always like to make stock, but today I'm using stock cubes and that's fine. I'm putting in the lentils and the stock cube. And lastly, I'm adding some coconut milk and salt. Mix every raw thing together, cover and leave it to boil for about 45 minutes to an hour, at least until everything is cooked through. But let me tell you. The boiling of this everything together somehow meshes all those flavors. I, can, I think for me, this is my most favorite meal this month because it is so rich and creamy. And then the sweet potatoes just, you know, they just lend such a thickness to this too. Please, please, please try this. And then once everything has cooked through, I'm just going to add in my red peppers. And I don't let them cook too much because I don't want them to be like too soft. You know, I just put them for a little bit and then star, 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 and that's it. Delicious. Oh my goodness, this is so delicious. And this is all I made. Wow, this is quite a bit of food that should last us at least a month, if not more. And it's gone really easily. I don't feel like I struggled. And if you'd like to see how I organize all these meals in my freezer, check out this video and I'll see you over there. Bye.